Hi, this is another rant about magnetism and the kind of hassles that people that research magnetism on a daily basis have to go through. Now, back in 1842, a clever scientist by the name of Earnshaw researched into electrostatic and static le levitations and all of his calculations were transferred from transferred from electrostatic calculations and just transferred straight into magnets and into magnetism as well um, no real thought was put into it and no one seemed to want to disprove what he'd written and what, what his theorem came up with. Um, he'd said that two magnets can't be levitated against each other because they'll just end up sticking together. Um, even if you arrange a load of magnets together and arrange another load of magnets together, you can't get them to levitate over the top of each other. He obviously tried for a long time and wrote down all the stuff and you know, back in 1842, he tried and he'd failed, but did he try to fail? Was that, was that his problem? Because um, over a hundred years later, in 1983, in fact, um, would that be 141 years later, um, a clever man called Roy Harrison, um, he actually managed to get a set of permanent magnets arrange them in a fashion and then get another set of electromagnets put them on top of them and make magnetic levitation which really rebutes the scientific community who believed everything that this Earnshaw bloke had uh, written down now just imagine if you know let's say Earnshaw had documented his stuff took his time proved that he was scientifically sound and he was a scholar, he was educated, he got university examinations and he was trusted, he is a trusted part of the scientific community and his white papers on electrostatic field and electromagnetic fields and magnetic fields were the be all and end all. There's no rebuke in him, there's just Oh, no, shut up. Earnshaw did that 100 years ago, don't even bother. And then this bloke, Roy Harrison, just wasn't going to take that for granted. Now, as soon as I read Earnshaw's paper, I'm thinking to myself, hold on a second, if I take these magnets and then put a counterbalance weight underneath them, I'm going to be able to do what he says I can't do. It doesn't matter what, if I make the counterbalance weight out of wood and some non-magnetic material, uh, aluminium, or a denser material than that, it's not magnetic, I don't know yet. Uh, water, it's di diamagnetic. Uh, so make a water balance underneath it, then I can make levitation. All right? Then it goes and reads on further, and I, and I find this Levitron thing that's designed by Roy Harrison. And there's no need for me to prove that um, Earnshaw is incorrect. He's correct in most of his assumptions and most of his calculations, but unfortunately, he just didn't go that further step. He wasn't trying to prove that you could create magnetic levitation. He was documenting things in a fashion which was acceptable to the scientific community in the hope that no one would ever try and create magnetic levitation ever again because he'd proved that you can't do it. Which, to me, well, it's childish, um, it's restrictive, it's a waste of human resources, um, it's a waste of a lot of time, um, because if it, you know, it's just a waste of resources. Let's say you spent 20 years doing it and documenting all this data and got nowhere. He was fed at, um, talked in science fairs, went to nice places around the world, and all he did was hold us back for 141 years. Right? The second point, um, for those 141 years, if we'd have been now investigating in magnetic levitation, 
would have been 141 years further up the scale of researching into magnetic levitation, whereas he proved it was impossible, so no one tried to do it for 141 years, apart from a few people with not a lot of money. I can't remember the other point, I don't really care, I think that's really highlighted it. And let's say we did have magnetic levitation, which we've got now, like with diamagnetics, it's called maglev. Um, Let's see, let's see if we had it without diamagnetics, because he says it's okay you can do it with, with diamagnetics, but you can't do it with just magnets alone. Now let's say he'd have proven the Levitron 141 years ago, uh, and we'd have been using the Levitron for 141 years. There's so many benefits from using that kind of technology. Now, going on from the Levitron, which is a fixed, which is two sets of fixed permanent magnets, what if you took the fixed mag permanent magnets and had them as your trail or as your as your track and then used movable permanent magnets to not only move not only, to not only levitate in one direct in, in, in one place, if you move the magnets with some kind of you know, levers and pulleys and what have you, now you can maneuver around places so you know hospital bed things you know the trolleys that they push you around on throwing wheels you could have magnets in the floor and have these little things with well today you'd have just push buttons right to that person to that place there and it would just take it across the magnets but you can't do that with a trolley because it has an electric motor in it and the electric motor would bugger up If you had a dia, dia, diamagnetic and levitron device, so you diamagnetic just in case it breaks so it doesn't hit the floor and crash, it goes <laughs> and stays at a permanent height, but then you turn your magnets on, or when your magnets are working, it goes up to a normal height and it can be moved around. Um, that would save a lot of labour. A lot, a lot, a lot of labour. Um, that's just one example for using it. And I've got many more examples for using it as well. Why do we believe in these people? What happens if um, Einstein theories? He'd, he'd worked that hard, worked really, really hard to do what he did, and the theories he came up with, along with a lot of other scientists, it's just Einstein's highlighted out. So I'm going to highlight on him because he's been highlighted out as the be all and end all, and the make the the, make, the uh, inventor of. Um, this E equals MC squared which led to nuclear weapons so he's been held up as this great scientist it wasn't just him lots of other people worked on it like yeah so let's say if the work that all those scientists along with Einstein were just slightly wrong because they weren't working to get what they really wanted they were just working to get what they were paid to do so they just skewed the truth a little bit and because they're clever, which they quite clearly are, they just made sure that there were just little discrepancies here and little discrepancies here. Or, on the other hand, the scientists know that the people that want these things, the money people, really only want them for weapons. <laughs> so what they do is, they don't quite give you everything you need. They just give you what they think you should have. And then people like me, sit there going, yeah, but that's possible, and everybody's going, oh, no, but that's impossible, and I'm going, yeah, but that's possible, uh, uh, no, it's impossible, uh, and it makes us infuriated, absolutely infuriated, when we've just read works by 25, 50 people, like, yeah, and correlated that data by remembering certain things, and the penny, like, it's like the penny hits the slot, like, or the penny drops, or whatever, I don't know what the saying is that you want to use, but you, you correlate the data in your mind and what you've read. While you read it, it sort of goes, oh, but somebody else wrote that, and that doesn't quite correlate. So one's right, or the other one's right, or they're both wrong. And if they're both wrong, then that person over there, he's incorrect, and such and such is possible. And I do it all day long. I do it all day long. Now today I'm reading about Earnshaw's theorem. Again, I've read it. I don't know, seven years ago, eight years ago, uh, and it just doesn't. I don't look at the ca 